So welcome everybody. Good afternoon. I hope everyone is really well. How I'm structuring the um, six sessions that we'll have on business strategy and product innovation is I thought to tackle um, six topics and obviously questions will go broader than this, but today we're going to have a look at COVID digital trends and opportunities. So that's the presentation today. Next one, we'll have a look at the why and how business planning. We'll then look at research and customer insights, target markets and customer personas, values and goals, establishing your values and goals, and then um, taking that into strategies and actions. These consumer trends have become known to us over COVID. Um, and when putting this um, presentation together the other day, you know, I was asking myself, are these things still current? And I think they very much are. And in terms of the case studies I'm going to introduce you to as part of this brief presentation today, they certainly um, relate back to these trends. But five key trend areas, first one being hyperlocal. Um, what we saw during and what we see during um, COVID shutdowns and, and movement restrictions for people is that consume, and we also see this in natural disasters as well, is that consumers want to support the local market. They actually want to support local businesses. They want to help recovery. Um, and so that is something really important to keep in mind that there's this sentiment there with consumers that they want their local economy to recover and do well. Um, they also don't want to have to travel too far. If they can get to local produce, if they can get to local providers, then that's what they'd like to do. It doesn't mean that in the it doesn't not apply in the online world as well. Um, knowing that you're supporting a local business, even if you're purchasing online, is still a sentiment that is there. So that's something to bear in mind when you're thinking about the opportunities that come from a market that's being restrained in terms of, of how it's able to move around. Um, so I'd like you to think about what are the opportunities for your business against that trend. Um, second trend that we see very strongly is the need to trust. Um, so people are looking for businesses to do the right thing and to make it really clear about what they're doing in um, the COVID um, environment that we're working in. Obviously, if you're business to business or working online as opposed to having a um, you know business to consumer shop front type business anything to do with hospitality um, you may not feel as impacted but certainly if you're in any of those categories where you're dealing with consumers then making it very clear about how you are COVID safe in your business and how you're looking after your customers is super important and not making them have to ask and this is certainly the case with um certainly all of the hospitality and tourism businesses that we have tried to support through this period is um, the you know, key tip there of making it very clear on all of your communication channels, what is your current situation? And I saw an excellent retail example with a, um, with a organic grocer that is nearby in the area that I live in in Brisbane um, as, I'm, as, as I have my contact details quick text message out the other day to say we are still open of course wear your mask just that you know simple reassurance without me having to go online to go are you open so but but all of those channels you know pinning a post to your Facebook page having a COVID um, web page that is linked from your home page that is always being updated this makes it easy for your customers the third one is really relates very much to um, businesses who are working with consumers and providing recreation or hospitality or any kind of, you know, nice customer experience is this customer um, need to break free to get out after they've been in lockdown. So if you have a business that can, um, can leverage that in any way, uh, you know, you know that this pent up demand, we see it every time that the lockdowns lift. Um, what is it, the thoughts that come to mind for me in this case is, what is it that you can be offering to them in terms of packages or specials that allow them to get out safely, um, to get out of the house? 
what about delayed um, celebrations that they haven't been able to do because of lockdowns? What can you offer to them that can really appeal to them? The um, fourth um, trend, uh, then this really appeals to all businesses, is digital, what we call digital overload. So what we've seen since the beginning of COVID is great increases in terms of the use of online communications platforms. So death by Zoom. Um, there's, I don't think there's anyone who hasn't used Zoom now. Um, everybody learning how to use Zoom, how to set themselves up so they, you know, they, they've got their faces in the right position, etc. That we still do get a bit of this. Um, messenger, group messaging, FaceTime, all of that's just gone nuts. And it's been great because it's provided a mechanism for people to remain con in contact with each other. It's also been fabulous for businesses who've never allowed you know, their staff at large to work from home or remotely before. Now they have, they've got the tools that they can easily use to stay in contact. We've seen that uptake by all demographics. So we're hearing of grandparents going on to FaceTime. It's fantastic. You know, people have never used Zoom before in an older demographic who are doing that. Um, and social broadcasting as well. So lots of businesses going on and, um, and people, individuals as well, you know, taking advantage of being able to do live, live videos, a lot more um, digital content over social to be able to stay in touch and let people know what's going on in their businesses. So huge opportunities for all of us in there. And I'd love you to think about that and how you're using it in your business. And then related to that, but separated because it deserves its own category is what we called the cashless revolution. Um, what we saw very early in, um, in COVID was um, PayPal reporting what they called their silver tech surge. So over 50s for the first time ever doing, um, doing online purchases through PayPal. So they experienced growth like they'd never had before. Um, we heard, we keep hearing of online retail sales growth. And I know even personally, I have turned to a lot more online shopping, discovered the outlets that I prefer to use that I find are more reliable and I like the way that they track their deliveries. We heard some amazing adaptation stories and continue to, and I'm going to share a couple of case studies with you in a sec, of businesses that have used e-commerce to innovate their distribution and to really survive and, in fact, grow by converting their business models to e-commerce business models, taking advantage of, um, of this growth in online shopping. So you know, they would be the five trend areas that, um, that we have summarised and continue to summarise and that we think have um, a lot of relevance for a lot of businesses. So I'd love you to think about that. And at the end, I'll summarise some considerations for you and things that you might take into action. I'm going to tell you about three businesses and the full story with them talking on video in interviews. I've got the link for you to go to them in at the end of this. Um, but the first one is Maria Ulas from Artilia Jewelry um, and she's based in Melbourne. The second, uh, Michael and Paola uh, Karamalis who have a confectionery business, a um, uh, um, fairy floss business um, out of Sydney and then Guy Vardis is ceramic um, pottery business out of Melbourne. So I've stayed away from Queensland. I just thought we'll look at some other states and some other case studies and I'm just going to tell you briefly about their story and see if you can relate to any of this. You may have done some of these things yourself. Um, the first one with Maria is when they went into um, 
the first lockdown in Victoria. She decided to utilise the time, kept her, kept her staff working, and they basically did a digital overhaul of their business. They looked at all aspects of how they service their customers, how they do quotes, how they market their business. Um, they re rebuilt their website. So they basically did a complete digital overhaul. What that has resulted in for them by being able to um, be, have a better presence online and being able to service um, customers through online chat, through um, using face-to-face -face video to talk to them, through doing um, ring sizing online by using a, a tool that they email to people to be able to size them size themselves for rings. What that's resulted in is not only continuing to have that, that shopping flowing through, but they're actually getting customers from outside of Australia as well. So that was a really great good news story um, when we interviewed Maria. Um, and heard what she did. So that's the first one to share with you. The second one is the Caramalises with, with Fluffy Crunch. Now, their business was all about being at um, events. They are renowned for having glow in the dark fairy floss at the Vivid Festivals in Sydney. So they basically follow the festivals. Now, these guys, um, didn't have much you know, small following on social media but it was all about being at those at those events at those festivals well they just went in the first lockdown they just went straight to selling online so they set up an online shop um the top of my head I can't remember if they if what they're using if they're using Shopify or um WooCommerce or what they're using it doesn't matter they started they packaged up their fairy floss with a whole theme of gifting people um, and what a great clever idea because isn't that novel you know this idea of having a really interesting gift and you could buy these sample packs and there uh, they how they reached out to actually get people to know about it so rather than doing a whole lot of paid advertising they first went to their rather small online community and to their offline community and they just helped got help to spread the word well they experienced oh, sales growth they've never you know much more than they've had over the previous year as a result of selling online and going out to that community so they're another great good news story with going to that e-commerce model um, and this, the third and last one I wanted to share with you a little taster of is Ceramic um, out of Melbourne, the potting store. So what they had was, what he had, was it had a, did have a great following on Instagram anyway. He's young, he's very um, Instagram savvy. But what he was doing is running workshops. So you went physically into the workshop, into Melbourne um, to learn how to pot. Well, obviously in the shutdowns, no potting, no potting happening here. Um, but what he did is he just, in the first instance, he just started with the digital content. So he hadn't, he'd been posting photos and things, but he just went nuts with video. So he started showing people what he was doing using video content. That then exploded into inquiries for, I want to be able to do this at home. So then he had to move really quickly to innovate his product and change what he was selling. So he started selling do-it-yourself potting kits, and then they would use the video to learn how to use them. Well, he's undersupplied. He exhausted all of his supply channels to be able to sell these. He's still waiting for more supplies to come in, but that worked really well for him um, to do that. So one led to the other. So the video content, then the demand, packaging up, and, the, and away he went. So um, they are three brief stories I wanted to share with you. Those full stories, um, if you would like to hear those people interviewed, sit amongst, um, so if you note down this um, URL or just do a search for one small step, they are videos that we recorded um, in November 
and they're all sitting up there for you where we interview quite a few businesses. You can always listen to them on double speed as well if you'd like to get through them a little bit quickly. But if you're looking for inspiration and want to hear about what other businesses have done, that's a good place to start. And you can hear those three businesses and others talking about what they did. So before we move on to looking at your questions and hearing what you've got to say, I, I'd like to summarise with um, sort of six considerations out of that um, and ask you to think about what actions you would like to take. The first one is, are you keeping your loyal and potential customers, customers informed of what your offerings or situation is during COVID? Is that relevant for you? And have you got that pinned post on your Facebook page? Have you got um, a pay, web page dedicated and linked from your home page? Have you got another mechanism to go out to them with a brief update on what's going on in your business? Second thing I'd like you to think about is, have you adjusted the way that you sell or service your customers so that they can do so from any location? So what, what adjustments have you made that will make it easier for them to continue to do business with you and allow your business to keep adapting during lockdowns and when people are getting offered a lot more opportunities to buy online? Is, have you e commercified as many of your products and services as, as you can? What opportunities does your local market offer to you? And have you got products or packages available that um, really appeal to them? So is there anything that's relevant for your business that you could be taking advantage and making sure that the local market know that you're really looking after them? Video. Are you incorporating video into your digital content? Um, socials, website, YouTube, email marketing. We know that video is, continues to garner greater engagement than still images. Um, we're seeing on Instagram the use of Instagram stories the engagement rate of that growing faster than still images. It's a form of video. We know that video is absorbed. Uh, it gets the message through um, much more quickly than a still image. So if you're not presently using video, then it's time to start looking at how you bring that into your digital content. Um, are you taking advantage of the growth generally in online shopping? So it's it's similar to item two, but just generally, are you taking advantage of that? And out of all of this, and I didn't have it in a trends and it's there, it's implicit in there, is have you addressed cybersecurity concerns for yourself personally and your business? Um, so we certainly cover cybersecurity in our um BizKeeper 101 program that's available in your courses on your dashboard. It's the first lesson. We cover key tips on cybersecurity. Um, but what I would love to know is that you have in place safe password management. So that's one of the things that all of the cybersecurity experts will tell you that you need to have in place. Um, that you uh, are um, dating those passwords regularly. Um, and you have complex passwords. So all of these things come into safe password management. And that's one of the key things that you can do to protect yourself. Um, and be very wary of anything you are asked to click on. So I don't know about you, but if I get asked to click on anything in a Facebook message, I just definitely do not do that. I know that my bank is not going to email me or text me and ask me to click on something. So be very, very wary of those requests. Unfortunately, scams have grown in COVID, so we have to be hyper vigilant. So they're the things I'd love you to sort of take out of this. And um, I'm sure that you've had other, other key takeouts as well. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that and got some ideas out of it and um, 
lovely to see those of you who turned on your camera thank you but also happy for people just to be talking on their microphone whatever works for them and I will see probably some of you again in a fortnight okay thanks guys see you bye